This is how much money you can make from YouTube Shorts. It's a 10 cents RPM from a thousand views according to this post. And it is a number I can confirm from our own channel analytics. On average, we're earning a 9 cents RPM on a thousand views of YouTube Shorts. So if you wanted to make $3,000 per month from YouTube Shorts, you need around about 30 million views, which obviously to the average YouTube creator sounds like a lot, right? But if you understand the YouTube Shorts algorithm, know what you're doing and can build momentum, it's not as difficult as you might think. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do. The best thing about this method is that you can do it completely faceless and voiceless. You don't need any fancy editing and you don't need to buy access to any stock footage websites. The videos you'll be making are so easy to produce any beginner can do it effortlessly. And I'll show you a channel that's doing this successfully in a moment. But first, let me show you the method. First, you need to decide what type of videos you want to upload. Now you can pick any niche you want as long as it fulfills two criteria. First, and obviously, you need to pick a niche that you have a natural interest and passion for so you can upload consistently without it starting to feel like a drag. And for this method to work best, you'll need to upload once a day. Secondly, it needs to be a niche where you can add commentary and a story to tell. Now, yes, I did say that this method is faceless and voiceless, and I do mean it, because for this method, you can use text to speech, and I'm gonna show you a free tool you can use later on. And once you've decided on your niche, it's time to make your first one of these. But a quick disclaimer first. From here on in, we're delving into the world of YouTube automation, which can be a divisive topic on YouTube, especially considering how this content is created. But what we also know is that you, the vidIQ community, are interested in this format of content. Automation is growing fast on YouTube, and it does have a place on the platform since there are so many successful channels doing it. And this form of content has been supercharged by YouTube Shorts and the rise of AI tools. So with that in mind, the key concept I want you to be thinking about throughout this entire tutorial is this originality. This is at the heart of everything creators should be striving for on the YouTube platform. And ultimately, originality is what viewers want. You should have the mindset to create something new, fresh and different from the original source material. And we'll explain what we mean by that and why it's so important in just a second. Your YouTube short will need three basic elements, visuals, voiceover, and some background music. Your research begins with the visuals. Obviously, royalty-free image sites such as Pixabay are a good starting point, and there are at least a dozen AI tools that can help you generate appropriate visuals with the right prompts. But for content that relates to famous people, brands, or events, you're going to have to get more specific with your Google search. And this is where you need to start considering the copyright implications. The heart of your content can't just be lifted from one source. So research multiple images that you would like to use in your YouTube short. I'll tell you exactly how many you will need in just a second. And you will be adding a voiceover with commentary or story on top of it. And what all of this is going to do is make the content transformative. What this means is that your new content is adding a new expression, opinion, meaning to the original content, therefore making it fair use. And if it's fair use content, it's monetizable once you're in the YouTube Partner Program. Now I have seen many channels that use video clips instead of static images. And they just download these from say TikTok, add a voiceover and some music. But the problem is it's typically downloaded from one video source. And the original owner of that content may want to apply copyright protection on that footage. And so that sort of content is far less likely to get monetized, especially if it's from official broadcasts such as television and sports events. You want multiple visuals from many different sources, which is why it's best to use images. But at the same time, you don't want your short to look static, boring, frozen in time. Ideally, you do want a little bit of visual movement. And there are two ways to achieve this. First, add captions to your YouTube shorts. Make sure those captions are bouncy. This will make them more engaging. You can look up tutorials on how to do this in editing software, and it's super easy. And make sure to use a font that's easy to read and popular. Comica Access, for example, is a Mr. B style font that's free and used in a lot of YouTube shorts. The second thing that will aid visual movement is lots of different images. It keeps the content fresh throughout the video and continually re-engages the viewer. So, for example, if your short is 59 seconds, a good number of images would be 20 or one every two seconds. But does that mean you should be making 59 second long YouTube shorts? 
Probably not. The successful shorts channel that we discovered, and I promise you I'll show you in a second, tends to make 59 second long shorts. But their most popular shorts with six and a half million views is 46 seconds long. Make your shorts as long as it needs to be to tell a compelling story. For example, we recently spoke to YouTube short sensation Jenny Hoyos. She averages 10 million views per YouTube short, and her sweet number is 34 seconds. Here at vidIQ, we have a couple of shorts that have several millions of views. You could say they've gone viral. And our most popular short is 39 seconds. So as a general recommendation to kick things off, Try experimenting with shorts that are between 30 and 59 seconds long. And I'm saying 59 seconds, by the way, just to give yourself an extra one second of grace so it doesn't turn a short into a long form piece of content. Time for the next basic element now. And this is where the transformation really takes place for your content voiceover. The story, without doubt, is the most important piece of the short, and it serves two purposes. As I've already said, the story makes the content transformational, meaning it's monetizable. And secondly, stories are the greatest hack to retention. Now, the problem is a lot of people overthink storytelling. But right now, I'm going to give you a super simple yet effective storytelling template. And once you're aware of it, you'll see it in viral shorts all of the time. A hook. This is the attention grabbing opening that gets viewers interested. It can be an intriguing question or a provocative statement. The setup. This is a part where you introduce more details or set the stage for the main action or message. The conflict. The main problem that holds viewers attention and keeps them watching to find out how it's resolved. And finally, to wrap it all up, the payoff. A satisfying conclusion where the conflict gets resolved or the punchline of a video is delivered. And the best thing about this simple template is that you yourself don't need to be an amazing writer. Simply give your topic and the template to ChatGPT or vidIQ's AI coach and it will write the story for you. And now you have the story, you need to get it narrated, a voiceover. And as promised, here's the best free tool you can start using right now. Go to Google Cloud Text to Speech. Scroll a little bit down and use the demo. You'll have access to both female and male voices. You can use a free tool like Audacity to record the voice to your computer and save it as a file. That is pretty straightforward, isn't it? And then for the music, you can choose from YouTube's own audio library. This will ensure that there's no copyright issues so you can monetize the short. The key is to finding the right vibe that fits the story for the YouTube short. Filtering by music genre and mood should help you with that. And don't forget you want instrumentals only since you're going to have a voiceover on the video. Now you have a visuals voiceover and music, all you need to do now is put it all together through a video editor. Obviously, there are tons of video editors out there, but if you're looking for a recommendation, CapCut. It's free and you can use it either on a mobile device as an app or through your desktop web browser. Now you have all of the three basic elements. It's time to show them in action, which means I can finally reveal that channel I was talking about. This channel is the bodybuilding beast and they have around about 200,000 subscribers. And their most popular video has six and a half million views. The incredible stats about the channel are this. It is just six months old. They have around about 125 videos, which means they're publishing one short a day. And in the last 30 days, the channel's gained over 33 million YouTube Shorts views. And if you take a look at the shorts themselves, you can see just how simple they are. It is literally image after image after image with a little bit of pan and zoom. There are captions, but there's no bounce to them. They're just stuck on screen. The voiceover is clearly done by AI text to speech, but it sounds natural enough to be engaging to the viewer. And there is some background moody music. With Eddie Hall's exceptional genetics in his DNA, Max's potential is off the charts. All in all, pretty basic stuff, yet these videos are getting millions of views and you can probably do better. Now you may have a lingering question at this point. Is this channel actually monetized? I'm gonna show you how to find out with 100% certainty. Open up a YouTube short on a desktop browser and get the video ID from the URL. Then in a new tab, paste this YouTube URL and then add the video ID back in. Now on the video watch page, check if there is a super thanks option. If there is, that means the video is being monetized by the creator. And if they have more than a thousand subscribers, then there's ads running on it as well. So if all of these YouTube shorts are monetized and they're getting 33 million views a month with an RPM of around about 10 10 cents, that's 
$3,300. And once you're earning that sort of cash, you can really start to invest in your YouTube channel. You can start making long form videos and invest in a video editor and a thumbnail designer. You could even build a whole team with a script writer and a human voiceover artist. There are many faceless channels that run channels in this way, and it's called YouTube automation. And we spoke to an expert who will show you exactly how to do it.